This is my third time coming to Russia for studies. Um, I came in 2017 for the first time and then studied at Migimo this past summer a second time. I just couldn't get enough. And so when it came time for me to choose a study abroad, I had no problem selecting Moscow. And I did the summer program at Migimo and then wanted to contrast that with a more liberal university, uh, which is HSE. And so that's where I am right now, studying international relations and economics. I grew up with a lot of German in my households where most of my family lives. And those histories are so closely intertwined with each other that you couldn't discuss the history of Germany without discussing the history of Russia. And so from that point, I became really infatuated with the culture. I play cello, so all of the music was just obviously entrancing. The literature was a huge part. And then it was curious to me as uh, the world affairs started to develop how the United States and Russia seemed to always be at odds with each other. And it seemed like there were so many places for them to converge and instead they were pulling apart. So the more people told me I was crazy for wanting to study Russia and for wanting to go into it, the more I wanted to do it. So I thought we're better to, to build that sort of communication than Moscow. I'm happy that I've been here during different seasons because the past two times that I was here, I was here during the summertime, White Nights Festival, Lilacs, and it was stunning, World Cup, everybody was in a great mood. And each time has been so different. And this time in particular is the longest time I've been here, about four months, which still is absolutely nothing to get a real picture of, of Moscow, um, let alone Russia. And I think that Moscow in particular has a very raw beauty to it that it's, it's not a culture that's given to you. It's something that you really have to earn for yourself, whether it's a smile from somebody on the street that's not going to be willingly given to you. You have to, you have to earn it and um, really respect yourself. Find what you're interested in and pursue that. Otherwise, Moscow is going to be terrible. But once you're able to really identify with yourself what you have to offer the city, the city will offer it back to you. I really like that. So I actually went to St. Petersburg first, and I thought I couldn't like a city in Russia more than St. Petersburg because I love Dostoevsky, so it was like, wow, here I am. Um, and I was obsessed with Catherine the Great, Prussian princess, of course. Um, so I was very entranced with the history. Um, and then when I came to Moscow, I just, I don't know, people were mean and they were not happy about having an American sometimes and I kind of was, it was very interested in that, it was a little bit more challenging. So I found that, I found Moscow in particular to be very, very challenging, um, but very real as well um, in a lot of senses. It was confusing, like why does the metro system work so well with such beautiful architecture inside these stations, but um, you know, certain other administrative processes are completely obscure and make no sense to me. Um, so I was confused and challenged, I would say. What advice would you give to go, those going to Russia? I mean, I would say it's the same advice. I, Russia isn't so much an anomaly that people make it out to be. They say, Russia, oh, this is the way that economics works. Exception is Russia. They, see, they keep saying how exceptional Russia is, and it is in a lot of senses, but not, not as a rule. Um, I would say go in without expectations. If, if, if you expect people to be mean and cruel, if you expect the city to chew you up and spit you out, it will. Um, and if you expect it to be a propaganda machine, then of course you're going to see that. Whatever you go in thinking you're going to see, you're going to see it. And that's because Russia has so much to offer. So if you keep yourself open, then you in turn will be open to receiving everything. Um, but whatever you think you're going to see, you're, you're definitely going to see it. But just don't let that limit, limit your vision. Because I, like, like, it's, like I said in the beginning, it's a challenge. And if you're up for a challenge, then Moscow is for you. It'll challenge you to listen to music differently, to uh, disc how to orient yourself in a city differently, communicate with other people. Um, and I think discover what you need and how to get what you need differently. So it's definitely worth it for that. 
But if you don't want a challenge and you just want leisure, Moscow can do that too. It's like lovely theaters that are uh, not so expensive with wonderful quality. There's something to discover everywhere, so. Things I've learned in Russia. Oh my. <laughs> I've learned a lot. Um, let's see, well I've learned that sour cream tastes better here than in the United States. <laughs> I've learned that how people construct their personal identity is is very very different um, just depending on where you live and I, I know this I, I go to international like a university and everything and I've traveled but never someplace that has quite the subtle cultural differences like Moscow so the, the way that a woman, a woman will act towards a man here it used to confuse me. Why would this woman be so cold? Whereas in the United States or even Europe, you tend, people tend to be friendlier with one another. And then I will see uh, certain things on the streets and understand how people take care of themselves. The, an interaction that may mean one thing in the United States um, or a certain gesture means something completely different here. And sort of learning how to interpret those gestures has been a, a curve for sure. Um, yeah, I think I've learned to be a little bit more confident too. Like if I'm going in the wrong direction, at least do it confidently. Don't let anybody see that I'm not confident at the very least. Um, uh, be confident, but then also uh, not so defensive. <laughs> so, Russia's taught a lot. <laughs> Russians always talk about, um, they always talk about how unhappy they are. <laughs> <laughs> at least so many of my friends, or right, how good it was two years ago, <laughs> um, uh, without a fail. And I told my Russian friend, I said, in two years you'll be saying how great this time is, and he says, yes, and that's when I'll enjoy this time, but for now it's terrible. <laughs> um, constant nostalgia? Constant nostalgia of all ages. Um, but uh, They will talk about the past quite often as if that's the explanation for the way things are today. And always, always asking Pochimu why, like, why do you see Russia like this? Why are you like this? Why do you do this? Oh, one thing is on the escalators in the metro, I find that Russians walk very fast. So they always seem like they, they have something that they're going to. But metro culture, I think, is very interesting. And so they will be walking very, very fast, you know, like pushing and shoving to get to, to stamp their card first so that they can go through and get down. And then they will be rushing, rushing, and then get to the escalator and stop and just stand and wait for the escalator to go all the way down. Why don't you walk down? <laughs> but no, they'll... <sighs> and then dart off again. And this doesn't make any sense to me because you could really maximize your walking. You just walk down. <laughs> on the metro, people also are on, on their phones. And one time I looked over at the, the guy sitting next to me and he wasn't even on his phone. He just had it in his hand. He was just staring at it and sliding back and forth and he wasn't even doing anything. So it's like anything to avoid eye contact or what have you. Although I notice on the streets in England, for instance, where people will pretend that you don't exist and just not look at you at all when you're walking on the streets and in the United States where everybody will look at you and say hi, good morning and smile and it's a little creepy here in Russia they just stare no smiling, no greetings they just stare <laughs> so I think that's, a, that's a, like some weird Russian habits it also surprised me people are very scared of the cold here like as soon as the temperature dropped a little bit, everybody was in hats and big <laughs> coats and everything. Whereas in the United States, they will be wearing shorts until you have two feet of snow on the ground. So it's a different sort of cold. Sometimes I will hear in the media, young Russians are very progressive. They are pro-Western, down with the government, hate Putin. Okay, sometimes it'll be like, they are just conservative, they want the rise of communism again. Okay, no, this is just not true. None of it's true. It depends on who you're talking to because, uh, like I said, my friends from the, the East, they are, I find, much more pro-Western than my friends from Moscow, um, who are more skeptical. And at Megimo, I found that they were much more conservative than the people that I met at HSC. Uh, and the undergraduates, tended to be more conservative than the students I met in the master's programs. 
So it really depends on who you're talking to and to say that, like to make those the blanket statements I think is so dangerous um, because then uh, as an American I could build up a prediction or an expectation of how somebody will act and if that doesn't happen then I'll be very confused and it's just, <laughs> there's, there's no pattern that I can see so. I think it's because Russia has so many different cultural influences that it's hard to stereotype. Uh, in so many ways, because it has so many differences within itself, that makes it uh, a little bit a little bit difficult for somebody from the outside to understand and to categorize. Um, because if you can relate to certain things, like um, you can relate to a behavior that a Russian does, but your reasons are totally different, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so I don't think it's it's so mysterious as. It's like Moscow in general, it's a challenge. It takes a little bit more thinking in order to understand. And you sort of have to take a step back from yourself, stop imposing how you think somebody should act or how a country should behave, and sort of immerse yourself into the experience and then bring it back. It's more of an, an iterative cyclical process rather than just uh, back in the one, one step, one, two, three way of understanding.